Decades of conflict have left Afghanistan's infrastructure in ruins and taken a devastating toll on its people. The World Health Organization estimates that three quarters of Afghan women and more than half of men suffer from mental health issues. The BBC's Zahar Zand has been granted exclusive access to a mental health facility where she met patients traumatized by war. This is her report from Herat in western Afghanistan. Well, as you can see, Zahar is uh, here in the studio with this uh, uh, astonishing uh, report and astonishing access. But this is a trip you were telling me only a short while ago, 20 years in the making for you. Tell us more about that. That's right. 20 years ago, I remember I was sitting down playing with my new Barbie doll. And I looked up and my dad was reading a newspaper. And on the paper, I saw this harrowing picture of a bunch of children playing with amputated limbs. I was just like, Dad, what is that? And he just folded his newspaper away and he was like, nothing, nothing, darling. And I was like, what are they doing? And he was like, they're playing just like you. I remember looking at my Barbie doll thinking, what those kids were playing with look nothing like my pretty new Barbie doll. I was like, are they, are they playing with hands? And my dad, I remember this so clearly. It's been so long, but I remember it. He put down his newspaper. He lifted me up, put me on his lap, and he said, look. And what he said to me all those years ago is what led me to go to the same spot that that picture was taken. He said, war, suppression, does not just leave destroyed buildings or corpses. It leaves ugly images in people's minds that are sometimes far more destructive. He actually lifted the paper and showed me that really, really horrendous picture and said, you shouldn't be scared of this picture. You should be scared of being ignorant to it. So what he initially tried to hide from you, who then explained yeah. to you, tell me a little more then about what you actually found. We saw just a short extract of your longer report, but what are the sorts of things that you actually saw and witnessed? Sure. Um, to put it really quickly, so basically that picture was taken in a... Um, um, former football stadium turned into a public ex execution ground during the reign of the Taliban and they would um, execute people they would chop off people's hands and they would just leave it and children would go and play with them that's the photograph I had seen now 20 years later I went to the same football stadium and that's what we're seeing there on, on the screen and tell me a little more about the people that you met um, I met a guy called Farhad at the stadium and he was telling me how he went to watch a public execution where he was, when he was around the same time, the same age as me when my dad was telling me the story. He said he saw a man's hand get chopped off, they threw it up in the air and when it landed it was still moving. A harrowing image. And he joked with me, I told him about the photograph and he said, <laughs> you know, probably that picture was of me. And you were telling me earlier about a 14-year-old girl. Yeah. You met uh, two of the people actually in that secure unit that you, you also met. Um, because so many people just desperately requiring help, which we read there, some of the official figures, how yeah. many people in Afghanistan yeah. traumatised by mm. decades of war that desperately need help. That's right. Um, I went to the psychiatric unit in Harris General Hospital as well as the secure psychiatric institution. So I went to two different places. Now... In the hospital, I met a 14-year-old girl who is suffering from PTSD, something that a lot of Afghans war-ravaged population are, you know, suffering from at the moment. And what was really fascinating is that even though she's been exposed to three horrendous traumas, um, she's only being taken to see a um, mental health professional now. And it's because mental health is such a taboo in Afghanistan. People are so scared of being labeled as crazy. So they just avoid it. They go to see imams for prayers. I actually, there was an explosion at a mosque and um, I went to speak to the imam who was leading the prayers when the suicide attack happened. And he himself is traumatized and he's even physically injured, but he refuses to go see a doctor because he says, I'm a traditional man and God will help me. And this, this is the mentality in a country that is so war ravaged and really needs that help. Okay, so thanks very much for coming in. You can see that full Our World documentary, The Trauma of War. It's here on BBC World News at various times that uh, uh, there will come up uh, on the screen throughout the course of the next couple of days. But uh, see that full documentary uh, that uh, Saha Zand has put together.